In this video series, we've learned five types of adjustments. We've learned to do adjustments for prepaid expenses. I'm actually typing these out for a reason. My writings gets a little messy at times and I, I have kind of condensed information I want to provide so I didn't want to uh, write everything this time. So we have prepaid expenses. We learned about amortization. We've learned about uh, accrued expenses. We've learned about uh, accrued revenues. And last, we learned about unearned revenues. I just want to quickly go through each of them. And I want to show you that doing adjusting journal entries for them is really actually easy. It should be easy. You know, touch wood. So first, to discuss prepaid expenses, we remember what they are. They're anything you pay for in advance. And again, they don't have the characteristics of an expense at all. They have the characteristics of an asset. You pay for an advance and you get the benefit later. Future economic benefit means it's an asset. Anyway, when we buy the prepaid expense, we're always going to debit some sort of prepaid. It might not actually be called prepaid, but you know, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent. Also, supplies is thought of as a prepaid, so you just debit supplies. You don't have to call it prepaid supplies. And then we're going to credit usually cash, maybe accounts payable if we buy it on account, but that's the typical setup transaction. Then at our fiscal year end, we're always going to do the same sort of thing. We're going to say, okay, how much of that prepaid has been used up? How much needs to be expensed? How much have we eaten through? So we're going to debit some sort of an expense here. Say we've used up some of that prepaid. And our credit here is always going to be to our prepaid to say, how much have we used up? We need to reduce our assets value by that much. So when it comes to prepaid expenses, always a very similar uh, type of, of transaction. Now I'm going to just, uh, let's see if I can kind of put a loop around this. Uh, maybe like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's prepaid expenses. Let's look at amortization. In amortization, at some point in the past, we're going to buy an asset. I'll call it a capital asset. You know, a long-term asset that wears and tears and depreciates in value. And when we buy it, we might credit cash. We might credit mortgage if it's a long-term, you know, house or building. We might credit some sort of bank loan, but let's just say credit cash. So then, at our fiscal year end, we've got to say how much amortization, how much wear and tear has there been on this asset? And we're going to debit amortization expense on the asset. And we're going to credit accumulated amortization on the asset. Uh, and again, for this type of journal entry, remember what amortization is. It's saying, when I buy an asset, it loses value over time. And systematically, we've got to reduce its value over time. And we do it through that amortization expense and accumulated amortization account. The journal entry at year end is always the same. That's a point I should make for prepaids as well. We're always going to debit some sort of expense and credit the prepaid. With amortization, we're always going to debit amortization expense and credit accumulated amortization. And the thing is, when I test this, because I'm an instructor, and when I test this in my class, this is something that students struggle on, but I don't know why. Because adjusting journal entries, you'll see, they're always the same. There's just only a few categories. I only teach these five initially, and then we do a few more as the semester goes on, but they always look the same. So, you know, you don't have to freestyle at all or be creative. Uh, I'm not a creative guy, so uh, that's why it appeals to me, I guess. Okay, on to accrued expenses. Accrued expenses don't really have a setup transaction. They just have a year-end adjustment. And we're always, remember what an accrued expense is. And it's, it's an expense that's built up, but the money hasn't changed hands. So I'm going to debit some sort of an expense. In the example we did, it was a salaries expense. You'll often see interest expenses, another very common accrued expense. And I'm going to credit that expense is related payable. So some sort of payable. So debit, in our case it was salaries expense, credit salaries payable. It might be debit interest expense, credit interest payable. Something like that. And again, it's an expense that's built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands. If I have an expense I haven't paid, it creates a payable. Debit the expense, credit the payable. All right. On to accrued revenues. 
Accrued revenues, kind of the flip side of accrued expenses. There are revenues that have built up over time, but the money hasn't changed hands yet. Accrued revenues are always going to result in some sort of receivable, often accounts receivable. Uh, and they're always, always going to create some sort of revenue for us. So the example we did in the question, we uh, I think we did some sort of, maybe it was consulting revenue or contract revenue, uh, and we had an account receivable. We had earned a bunch of money. We hadn't been paid yet. The revenue had built up over time. We hadn't got the money yet. Debit or receivable, credit or revenue, always, always, always for accrued, rece uh, accrued revenues. Finally, unearned revenues. Remember, unearned revenues like prepaid expenses may be a bit of a misnomer because they are liabilities. And just remember that an unearned revenue is a liability. Unearned revenues occur whenever you owe something, but it's not money. So somebody pays you in advance, you owe them, but you don't owe them money. You owe them a product or a service. So an unearned revenue type of transaction is going to look like this. We're going to debit cash to say somebody paid us. We're going to credit unearned some type of revenue, uh, maybe consulting revenue, whatever type of revenue our company earns. So whatever we got paid in advance for, that we're going to eventually do, we credit that as unearned revenue. Remember, even though it has the word revenue in it, it ain't a revenue. It's a liability. We're saying we owe you some sort of product or service. Then, at year end, for our adjusting entry, we're going to say, okay, well, uh, some of that revenue has been earned. Uh, so we do the transaction sometime in the middle of the year. Our fiscal year end, we figure out how much revenue we've actually earned. And we credit that revenue. It's got to be the same account as the unearned revenue, just without the word unearned. If I've earned the revenue, I've got to get rid of some of the unearned revenue. I debit unearned revenue. Unearned whatever type of revenue, consulting revenue or whatever it should happen to be. Okay, so those are the five types of adjustments I've gone through in our video series. And Looking through Intro to Accounting Textbook, those are five very typical adjusting journal entries. And Again, this is a topic that when I test my students, they don't do as well on and I'm, I'm never sure why because, like I said, the journal entries always, always, always will take on the format in the right-hand column. Those are what adjusting journal entries look like. So again, a prepaid expense. Debit the expense, credit the prepaid for what we've used up or what we've gone through or how much insurance has expired, as the case may be. Amortization. It's the wear and tear on our assets or the fact that our assets have lost value. Debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization on the asset. Accrued expense, the expense cost that's built up over time, money hasn't changed hands. Debit expense, credit a payable. Accrued revenues, revenues that's built up over time but money hasn't changed hands. Debit the receivable, credit the revenue. Unearned revenues, uh, again, that's uh, a liability. We've got to record the amount that we've earned. So at year end, we're going to say uh, credit whatever revenue we actually earned and debit the related unearned revenue account to say, no, no, it's not unearned. It's been earned. So these are our entries, and the thing I want you to pay particular note to is every single one of them has an income statement account and a balance sheet account. So it has one income statement account, one balance sheet account. Usually like it's an expense and an asset in the first one, an expense and a contra asset in the second one, expense and a liability, receivable revenue. These are all, one's an asset, one's a, an income statement account. Or one's a balance sheet account, one's an income statement account. The other thing, actually probably more important to pay attention to, is adjusting journal entries. None of them involve cash. So I want to leave you with that. If you're doing adjusting journal entries in real life, if you're doing them on a test or on an exam, as I imagine most students watching this will be doing that, if you're doing an adjusting journal entry and you put a debit or credit to cash at their fiscal year-end adjustment, you've gone wrong. So be very careful on that. Adjusting journal entries don't involve cash. That's what makes them adjustments. We're adjusting specific accounts. I hope this series has been helpful for you, for you and uh, stay tuned for more. I'm, I'm planning to update almost every week. That's all for today.